that we got. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm Alex Colvin. This is <clears throat> George Ingram. George Ingram, who was the fair director, Man. of, fair manager of the Intermountain Fair from 1946 to 1988. That is the longest term of any fair manager. <laughs> And, uh, you know, as I understand it, you graduated from high school here, and Jesse Paquette, yeah. um, who was the previous fair manager, was yeah. a teacher of yours. So Jesse, why don't you just... I, I want to get Jesse Paquette in here, yes. Can I do that now? Yes, you can. Why don't you just go ahead and, and, and share your Well, Jesse Paquette with was the ag teacher here at Fall River High School. He came down from Montana. He was the ag teacher from 1936 to 1946. He therefore was my ag teacher. When he left here, well, I don't want to do that yet either. He was the fair manager, and through his efforts and the board of directors at that time, was Willis Albaugh, Ace Doty, and Hugh Carpenter. And through their efforts, they got the Intermountain Fair designated through the board of supervisors as the Shasta County Fair. The reason for that was to make them eligible for the horse racing money that right. came in the fair mutual fund uh -huh. from the taxes on horse racing. So that was set up and all of a sudden they learned that they were going to get fifty thousand dollars. All right. What are we going to do? In other words. So the first thing they decided was they had to expand the fairgrounds, right? Right. <clears throat> so they went to PG&E. PG&E owned all the land from the edge of MacArthur through the swamp, big lake country. And PG&E was willing to deal with them. Right. They bought 97.776 acres. Okay, thank you for clarifying that for me. For $7.50 right. an acre. Yeah. All right. Okay. Right, and so then they could expand. Okay. Then they could expand the fairgrounds. Yes. So they got the land secured, <clears throat> and then Jess Piquet and probably Ace Doty and Willis Albaugh, they were the strongest two members on the fair board. They met with Claire Hill in Reading, who had a civil engineering firm down there, and Jess Piquet, with the knowledge of fairs that he had. I sat down with Claire Hill and they drew a master plan of the fair, and a fairgrounds. And, gotcha. what, and what you see today is what they put on paper. All right. So first they got the land from PG&E. Right. And then they hired Jesse. Uh, no, Claire no. Hill. Oh, Claire Hill. Yes. Yeah. That's when they got right. a hold of Claire Hill. Okay. And, and so then it. that provided the, fan, the plan that was used to develop the fairgrounds. Yeah. But you asked, first of all, about the building. And so the first building they put on that fairgrounds was the main hall. It was started in 19, the uh, fall or late fall of 1949. They got the concrete walls up, as you can find by looking at it, four feet. Winter set them down, and then they had to start again next spring, 1950. The building was completed by the 1st of August. Okay. And we had a dedication dance on August the 10th. August 10th, 1950. Okay. And that is uh, George Ingram Hall? Yes. Okay. The That's only... the year I was born. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in September. One month after, I was born right after the fair. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, that's about the way that went. The only thing I had, um, I remember, I, I'm proud of, is that we were able to find some little pin on orchid dressages for the ladies and for that dance. Oh, okay. All right. That was the only I was sure to put that in that there was a dance to celebrate. Yes, and the dance mm -hmm. band came from Reading, and we could give them hell too because they were, uh, <coughs> well, they thought they were union, I guess. Out of every hour, they had to rest 15 minutes. And I about got lynched every time they quit playing music. 
they weren't used to any of that up here. Right, right. And then they went to the dance, they danced till two o'clock in the morning, and then they went to somebody's house for breakfast. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what else BS can I give you? Well, um, why don't you go ahead and tell the story about uh, how you got, you know, how you became the fair manager? You know, because when Jesse was going to yeah. leave, <clears throat> you yeah. know, why did he pick you? You tell me. <laughs> he thought you were a good student. He thought you were industrious. Yes, you were hardworking. You were smart. No, and he thought, you that. know, this guy will do a good job. No, I don't know how that came to be. I had just got home from the Army in July. And uh, my best friend in high school, David Snyder, came home about a month or so after that. And he had a little accident. A log rolled off of a load of logs mm -hmm. and smashed him, broke his oh. pelvis. And he was in San Francisco Hospital. So I went down to visit him. And that's when I got a telegram to me. He had, they had the only way to hold her contact, they didn't have cell phones like you. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they sent a telegram, right? Right. They sent it to David's bedside for me. And uh, I guess it was my mother probably wrote it. It said, George, come home. There's a job waiting. That's my story. And when you came home, yeah. and you were offered this opportunity, yeah. um, which, is, which is a big opportunity now because... For a 19-year-old? For a 19-year-old. <laughs> And you've got a budget now because they're getting state monies. Yes. And you got a plan. Yes. All I had to do was stay out of the way. Really? All right. So who 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 oversaw primarily then the planning and the direction? Because I know you did more than stay out of the way. I know you executed it. <laughs> well but I had no knowledge of what the hell was doing, so it had to have been up to Ace Doty Willis Alball. Probably for most of it, Willis Alball. Ace Doty second and Hugh Carpenter third. Okay. The board of directors. All right. And the, and so they would meet, look at the plan and how to allocate the money, and well, and to decide on what building they were going to build next, because we were off into a building cycle at that moment, and they went right on down the line and the ag build, ag building. The next thing they did was. Uh, poured a concrete slab 60 feet wide, and I think it's 100 feet long, for the outdoor dance, which they wanted to do. And the first time they had that dance, it was so cold, nobody liked it. Mm. So they come back in the next year, we poured five feet of, so of concrete on each side of that 60 foot, and put a 70 foot by 100, and maybe 120 feet long commercial building. That's one second. <clears throat> I don't know which buildings came first, whether it was the office or the flower building. But the office was built and uh, we moved into it in 1960. Prior to that, we used the old range hall, which had been moved over next to the main hall. And that was my office. and. And they did the building, etc. And that's the present day Lions Club building. Uh, no, no. Oh, no. The original Grange Hall set in the street, which is now right in front of the fairgrounds, and they moved it from there and set it north south next to the main hall. Okay. On the west side. Okay. Yep. So that was our office in the back of it for all those years. Wow. Yep. So between 1946 and 1988, yep. a lot of development took place. And actually in Gloria's book, she lists, and I hope that her dates are accurate, she lists when different buildings, livestock buildings, you know, Good for her. a whole bunch Good of things were because, built. Well, I think I might remember, don't think what I tell you now, and we've been down on to too many dates. And then, and then, so then one thing I'm curious about because, you know, what, 
what events um, and I and because as the buildings developed it seemed like also so many new things right. were added over oh, a period yeah. of time the Queen's them. contest the junior rodeo the junior yeah. livestock junior livestock the kids and their parents the parents had to haul their kids and livestock to Anderson for the sale and I think Shirley MacArthur was probably the biggest push on that, but and I'm not sure whether Dick Nimenick was into it at that moment or not. But after it was going strong, he grabbed hold of it and then took it on. But that's how we, through the encouragement of people like Shirley MacArthur, right, brought right. the sale up here, and it worked. They were able to get the same buyers out of Reading up here as they would have gone to Anderson. So, uh -huh. You got anything to say under that one? No. But I think Dick Demonek would be a good one to follow up with. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, I don't have much to follow up on Dick Demonek other than to like everybody that we nailed for a certain job, that would stay with it forever. <laughs> uh, highway patrolman. I got him to be the parade when we started having a parade. Right. To be the parade chairman. And he stayed with it right on through until the uh, agey kids started helping him. And then when, what, I can't say his name. Everett. Everett Beck. Everett Beck did it for years. Yeah. Years. He was the parade manager. So first it was the highway patrolman. That was, that's him. That's Everett. Oh, Everett Beck. I couldn't okay. come up with the name, but I okay. had it. Right. 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 Everett right. Beck, yeah. and then, then Lawrence took it. And then Lawrence. And Lawrence did it for many, many years. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. that Lawrence yeah. from Highway Garage? Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then we should introduce you. This is uh, <laughs> my son, Robert. Yeah, Robert. Yes. I yeah, I, I met you before, Alex, down there. Uh, I think it was at a Rotary Club. At the Rotary yeah. Club, right. Yeah. Because at that time I videotaped your talk yeah. there and yeah. talked with you. Yeah. Because you've been really active with the Fort Mike. Crook Historical. Yes, yeah. my kids have had no choice. Yeah. He's been into that. <laughs> Daughter Anita has put on this golden wedding dinner that we will mention here a moment all of the way through. Since my folks had a, their golden wedding anniversary trip that level. So it was because of your parents' golden yeah. anniversary yes. wedding that they started having the golden anniversary wedding yeah. dinner. Yes. And if somebody and if a, somebody I was just came, kind of curious at that moment. Here's my folks having their fiftieth, and I thought, I wonder if there anybody else in the valley might have had their fiftieth. So that's how it started. All right. Well, curious. that's wonderful. Curiosity. And then, did, have you, were you an attendee at one of the 50th anniversary dinners? Yeah, and you have an idea I was. We were married for 56 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were. So, yeah. And so, Robert, you kind of grew up with the fair then. Oh, yeah. Your dad was the fair manager. Right. Yeah. And so did yeah. you ride or show in the fair? Oh yeah, we all of us kids had animals that we, you know, we did did 4-H uh, and then FFA and pretty much all of my sisters and then all of our, my nieces, nephews and my kids, everybody's been up through the fair and my wife started doing a flower border. I think she's been doing it. She was doing that before Dad retired. Yeah. So she's still doing flower borders every year. She That's, does that one means more than thirty years. Yeah. Does <laughs> one for the. She's doing one for the museum this this year, along with with hers. And she's getting to the point now where she and our oldest daughter alternate every other year uh -huh. as far as doing the flower border. It just happened. So happened was Lori's year this year, but like next year will be. Can you imagine what daughter. dedication that took? Yes. Yeah. And money. And that, so now the flowers, like, you know, from what I understand, like, um, when that got started in the mid-1950s with Rose Schneider, is that correct? Well, didn't you say that you went to a fair, was it over in your, uh, over on the coast someplace where they had the flower borders and yes. gave you the idea? Yeah. I think it was Crescent City that introduced us to that. 
And we started with flower gardens, and they were 10 feet deep and 20 feet wide. And we planted all of that area, and in competition with somebody else in that same deal. And we did that for, I don't know, two or three years. And then all of a sudden, somebody came up with a brilliant idea. Let's stretch that out and have it down the sidewalk. Uh -huh. And then we are now today. And so does do, do one one lady or one person takes responsibility for one stretch? Yes. And, and then and then they all take care of that, and then it's yeah. judged. As well, one there's some that are organizations. Well, we have one. Side. Organization is one like on the the would be on the east side, and then the individual gar uh, flower borders are on the west yes. side of the of the driveway. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Right. So we don't have too many organizations into it, but the the individual side is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, you got the, the garden club and then the 4-H clubs and the museum are on the organizational side and then the, the private uh, individuals are on the other side of it. Okay. Now, after Mr. Hoffman took over, and he was the fair director for 17 years, yeah. um, what, what significant developments took place during the fair during that time? Because it seems to me like from 1946 up through the 50s and 60s, there was so much development so much going and expansion. On, yeah. yes. And then there were so many events in place. So, you know, like when I looked at it and I kind of was, had to fill in the area that I didn't know that much about, I just said that, you know, every year it was a, it was a panoply and a showcase of the rich life of the Intermountain area. Listing all the many different kinds of events that went on that was just... Um, so, you know, complex. Well, the one thing that I guess would come to mind for Dennis's time there was he did get the restrooms built there by the sale building. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was something that was added. And I think Hens. the and the beef barn, the, the Walt Johnson beef barn was put up there next to the, the restrooms, or was that? It was always there. Was it? Yeah. I can't, I couldn't remember if that was they added. They just put a name on it yeah. for Walt Johnson. Yeah. So he he did a lot of the um, just kind of continuing this very yeah. complex fair that it started and, right. and and having things maintained and yeah. upgrading and making right. sure things went on well. Yeah. And then, from what I understand, there was a little bit of a little bit of a challenge um, when uh, word came that they were going to cut off the horse racing money, which had funded a lot of this yeah and uh and so then elena albog and others but she taking the lead to write the bylaws and stuff formed the, the heritage um, the heritage foundation yeah. before the funding was actually cut off um but then but then they they got a little bit ahead of it by starting to raise funds and then when the money was actually cut off they had the foundation going and so um the operation was able to continue that's what i kind of understand yeah and yeah, and no they also yeah. No yeah. If, and the other thing is you know correct me if i'm wrong that that from its inception the county board of supervisors would appoint the fair directors yes. and they and their tenure would be renewed you know if everything was good yeah when, um, when they wanted to quit they had to find somebody else that's all <laughs> And then, and then uh, when when they formed the foundation, then that board was absorbed into the foundation board with some new members added. And then after a couple of years, in 2014, they signed an agreement with the county um, to lease the property, um, that the foundation leases the property in order that they would no longer be billed by the county for things like accounting but they were able to... Um, they run into things like that, huh? Yeah, yeah. So they don't, So because the, the county owned the fairgrounds, and so they leased it from the county because then they didn't have to pay for county services. They could get in-kind, volunteer uh, things and reduce that cost. You know? And uh, so the fair goes on. Um, do you feel like that, you know, how do you feel about the fair now? I think it's great that they've been able to do that. Now they've hired a new fair manager to run the place, and they felt that they could give him a livable salary. 
Do you do you know what the new fair manager's name is? You do. I mean, I could tell the uh, uh, Steve Gagman, isn't it? It's Gagman or Gagman? Gagman. Yeah, Gagman. Steve. He owns the Al, uh, Aiden Aiden store Aiden up there. Farms. Aiden no, Supply Aiden. or yeah. Yeah. Aiden Supply. Right? And he also has the MacArthur Mini Mart. I think it's Gagney. G -A Gagman. G A G N O N. Why maybe? Gagman. Okay. Yeah, I believe that's how it's spelled. Yeah, sounds like a French thing. I know. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't caught up with each other yet. So, what year was he hired? <laughs> Just this year. This year. Okay. Yeah. A few months ago. Yeah, there was Bob McFarlane was in there between Dennis. Yeah, he was a good. One. Dennis. Uh, and Jake Schmiller. <laughs> yeah. That's Mc Hoffman. Mc Bob, Bob McFarlane. Yeah, it was Dennis Hoffman. And it was, so his dad, Dennis Hoffman, Bob McFarlane. And then I think it wasn't Courtney Woodward, she was in there for a, a brief time, and then Steve Gagnon. Yeah, and then did they have the titles fair? fair I believe so. Too? I believe so. And that, what was her name, Lori? Uh, Woodward, what's her? I, I, I don't know. I just said it. Okay. I know yeah. you did, yeah, yeah, that's what I heard you say. Courtney. Courtney. Courtney Woodward. Courtney Woodward. Yes, and she spelled it with a K, K-O-R-T-N-E-Y, Woodward. I never heard tell of that one. So they were fair managers, but they didn't, their, their, just, their salary just, was... Just brief, well, I, I don't know, I have okay. no idea how the, right. how yeah, the you'd have to talk to Elena about that, how that all worked. And I didn't ask for details, but Elena did tell me that um, Recently, the fair has begun to get some state money again. Oh, it has. Yeah. Oh, good. Really? Yeah. Oh, and, that's and, then, and then this is purely this kind of opinion or speculation on the part, but because I think part of it has to do with when the funding was cut in 2011, there were questions raised as to what the economic impact would be mm -hmm. and whether or not the state would lose more revenues than it was saving by not dispersing right. the funds. And so I think kind of seeing, you know, how it, things affect the economy and stuff, I think that the state, you know, with, you know, uh, people encouraging it and stuff like that, has seen that it is fruitful for them to provide some funding for, right. for the bears because it has a good return in terms of its economic impact. Right. Yeah. And speaking of that then, I'm just going to kind of put this in, in into, like, concluding, you know, uh, concluding remarks or whatever, you know. Um, having seen this, you know, for this, you know, the development of the fair for more than 80 years since you were in high school, yeah. and you for your whole life, right? Um, what do you feel are the primary, you know, uh, benefits of the fair um, for the Intermountain community and for Northern California at large. Well, for the Intermountain community, with the with the kids growing up, the the through their projects, either growing vegetables and that type of thing, gardening for the for the fair, to raising of the animals, it teaches them the responsibility and gives them the, the rewards of their of their labor, whether it's a, a blue ribbon for a you know, something that they've grown or something that they've built. Look at the kids that do woodworking in the high school classes that exhibit their what they've done. Uh, it gives them a great sense of accomplishment. And then the kids that are raising the animals and sell them through the through the sale. Look at the money that they can put in their savings accounts for their college funds. It's right. it's tremendous. You know, and just the I don't know. The, the overall um, benefit to the community, community-wide with the, uh, look at the canned goods and the baked goods, I, that's, that right. kind of comes to mind. It's always fun to go walk through all that stuff. Yes. So, and it's always a, a good time of the year when everybody gets to come home for, a, for a, the fair and, and catch up with old friends and families get together. And it's, it's just it's a nice time. I think you're touching on it right there. It's a family affair. So that's what you feel like the real heart of it is, is that this is a family affair. Mm -hmm. It was in my time. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, thank you both very much. Um, is there anything else that you that you would like to say? I don't know. You started to touch on that Rose Snyder, and she's been a lot of help through the years in, in different situations. She did a lot of the gardening over there for us. All of the, some landscaping, gardening, just every day, every day, every day. She did it without pay for a long time, and when we did pay her, we didn't pay her anything that she needed. Mm -hmm. You know, not our worth. Right. And the other one that has did a lot for me was Gail Ash. Gail Ash. Yep, she was the secretary for me for 20 years, and she continued on, and I don't know how long she stayed with Dennis Hoffman. But she was a great help to him, too, I'm sure. Uh -huh. She she was able to help him learn the ropes. Yeah, you know, had to. She ran, she pretty well carried me through those last <laughs> few years because she would write to judges and get and secure judges and all that paperwork stuff that has to uh -huh. go through. That's a lot of work. No. I guess there is one more question I have because Linda and I, like we in the past, have been in both the art show and the photography show. Yeah, they got one building completely full of it over yeah. there. And when was that added? Uh, when was the, the art art building was built in about '79, '78 or '79? I was about a senior in high school when that was Good for was you. being built. Good for you, I yeah. come up with that. And I remember the first winter that it was built. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. One one weekend in the winter time, all of a sudden, Dad goes to work on Monday morning to a water running out the doors. The <laughs> piping was built in the ceiling. All that oh, was, wow. you know, it's designed down in architects from ready. Yeah, they don't have to worry <laughs> about freezing, and they didn't get the pipes insulated, oh, and they wow. froze and broke, and a lot of the ceiling panels came down in the in the building at that time. So I remember we that. Few, oops. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that had to be fixed and rectified. Yeah. So but yeah, that was about when that was built. 78, 79, somewhere in there. That, that range. Oh, it ran smooth all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then one other thing that I really didn't, I know that there was, but I would um, just like maybe a few comments on music through the years. I think for a period of time there were like some fairly large concerts, you know, didn't they have concerts for a while? Yeah, yeah. They and, had. Then, and then was there a ball each year or? That was earlier, you know, probably in, when Dad's time was the, when they would have the big dances, you yeah, know. we had dances in the main hall. Yeah. Nowadays you couldn't get in the main hall because we have our dinner and we have the Oops. quilt show. Right. <laughs> no room for dancing. And that quilt show is fantastic. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, they take the big winner and hang it up there on the stage. Doing the fair. And then they go on, the winners go on to compete in the state fair. Right? Oh, do they? Okay. I think so. When I was there one year, they said, you know, that because this is a part of the fair system, then the winners from the county fairs will go on, you know, to the other country to compete. Yep. So, all right, yeah. well, that's, you know, I mean, it's been an exciting affair. Yeah. And I'm glad I got, I mean, I feel honored, honored to talk to you guys and also honored to, you know, be writing an article and calling it a partial history or, you know, because I know people are going to go, oh, you left out this or oh, yeah. didn't you'll, get this right. You'll, you'll, you'll have all kinds of stuff <laughs> like that. Well, well don't, don't put any big hoopla in there for me because, yeah. I, like I told you, I followed through and, Everything since then has been handed to me. Okay. I'm kind of following Gloria's lead yes. in how I treat you. Okay. And, and, but it is, you know, I mean, it, you had an effect, but I do appreciate what you said about, you know, I didn't realize you were only 19 years old when you became the fair manager. I was 22 yeah. weeks after. It was <laughs> 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 well, so like the covered arena. That was built in 1970. The big. Uh, <laughs> show barn, because there's a picture of me standing there with my grandfather, and dad's, dad's dad. So the three generations, they took a picture of us as they were building that barn. It's, yeah. it's around there someplace, I've seen it. Um, but yeah, that was built in 1970. 
So how long has the Ingram family been here in the valley? In the valley uh, since 1891. 1891. Yeah. And another side of it before that. Yeah, back in the 1870s. Yeah. Go back mm -hmm. even further. Can and you your stand? mother's side, one yeah. family yeah. is that yeah. other side. Can you stand one more TMI? Yes. I mentioned the exhibits were put in the Rose Barn the next year after the first rodeo was held in MacArthur Corrells, and this barn was next to the Corrells, between the Corrells and the road. And that barn was my grandfather's. Oh, really? <laughs> wow, okay. And that's where I got and the And that George. is what they called the Rose Barn. Yeah, Rose Barn. Yeah. Okay. Last name was Rose. So your grandfather's last name was Rose. Yes, yeah. that's, and he was a George, that's where I got. Oh, okay, George yeah, Rose. George Rose. All right, well, thank Is you. Is that a TMI for you? <laughs> uh -huh. That's great. What does TMI stand for? Too uh -huh. much information. Oh, okay. Well, you're more up to I have all these little antennas oh, and smiles. That's the only, only thing in the modern world that I have. Uh -huh. I can't even operate my telephone. <laughs> I can turn it on, I can turn it off. Well, I, I think that you're doing great, and I really appreciate you taking this time. And, um, you know, maybe so, you, you, you know, I mean, and I know you know, this is about the fair, I know you know a lot of other history for this area through the heritage, um, the Fort Crook Museum Heritage Foundation, too, so. But maybe that's enough for now. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and another time, you Come know. Come back, oh, yeah. Yeah, another time I'll get back to you on, you know, all that. And, and generally, the history of some of the families, you know, because um, yeah. I, I mean, when it stands, when I watch the fair, it stands out, you know, the Albog family and the MacArthur family, and then a few I saw them in there, like the Days or others. Right. But then I, then it's like, where are they now? You know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then, but the the We're Knock family, there. you know, <laughs> we didn't get rid of any of them. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, just it would be nice sometime to do. Um, to do something on the families, families, yeah, the families go around and talk to of, the families. you know, families of Fall oh. River and MacArthur, yeah, and um, yeah, or the families of the Fall River Valley. Right? Yeah, it's yeah, it'd be an interesting, it'd be an interesting thing to take on too. Yeah, yeah. and because if you know the history of the families, then you have, then you have the core. Like right. you said, it's a family affair. Yeah, you know? right. And then I guess a lot of the families, you know. Well, married, all, married one. Oh yeah, <laughs> through the years, if you go back enough generations, everybody's pretty much related at some point. And every old family has got some connection to the fair. It doesn't have to be at the fair time. A good example of this is um, the Fireman's Carnival over there. As a kid growing up, and as my kids <coughs> grew up through the going to the Fireman's Carnival, the fundraiser for the MacArthur Fire Department every spring. Um, for many years, Al Bruce, had uh, had a pond right next to his house, and he'd have he had uh, mallard ducks, tame tame mallards. He had so he'd have these ducks, and one of the the games that I don't think they do it anymore, but he would bring in a whole bunch of mallard ducks and some chickens, and the kids would throw rings, and if they got the ring over the duck's head or the chicken's head, they got that chicken or that duck oh, to take wow. home with them, right? <laughs> so I was I was quizzing. Al on it one time, I said, how in the heck do you raise enough ducks to keep this little game going every year? And he chuckled and he, he says, all the ducks are home within a week. <laughs> they oh. fly home. <laughs> they knew where home was. They're, they know where home is. So they, the, the kids, they'd have those ducks, they'd turn them outside and they'd fly off, they'd come home. <laughs> you know, that is funny because when I was a kid, about seven years old, and my grandfather, it was called Long Valley Ranch at that time, my grandfather, uh, you know, was uh, general manager of the Scott Lumber Company and he, we were out on the ranch. And one summer we went up there and down by Bernie Creek, as it ran through the ranch, um, what's you know known as Black Ranch, there were when we got up there, there were hundreds of baby ducks, oh. and we just went crazy catching all of them. 
And then down by the little white house down there by the chicken shed at the bottom of the ranch, we built a pen with chicken wire and stuff like that. And we had all these little baby ducks and we were so proud of them. And the next morning, they were all gone. They're gone. They had all dug under that fence and headed right back down to the They ground. went home. <laughs> yeah, they go home. That's, that's funny. So the, the guy who the from the fire, yeah. Was, yeah. he said those baby yeah, ducks come Yeah, he said it's up like, I, it's either a week or, I think it might have been like three days. Yeah. They're right, all home right. in three days. Yeah. yeah. They all come back. Boy. So. Okay, well, thank you very well, much. We learned something just then, too, didn't we? Yes. Where you come from. Yeah. Your roots.